My name is Gina, and I lost half my cheek and my lower eyelid from what I thought was a simple injection. Instead, I got injected with silicone. It looked like I had this huge alien popping out of my face. Wow. She said that was from injections of silicone? Silicone won't do that. There's got to be more to this story than just some silicone. Oh my gosh. She got injected, and this is what happened to her. This is her today. Whoa. She's got a major, major, major problem. What we're seeing is a lot of scar tissue on her cheek. And you can see she had that huge amount of swelling with that big hole in the middle. Honestly, I don't know what happened there at this point. So I want to definitely hear more of her story, but thank God things look like they've settled down. Thank you, doctor. My guess is that she has had multiple operations in that area to remove that silicone or whatever was there, and that created a lot of scar tissue, and you can see it's pulling her eyelid down. When the eyelid is pulled down like that, worst case scenario, you can't close your eye, and your eye can get really dry, and it can dry out your cornea, and that can be really, really uncomfortable, and even risky to your vision. Well, actually, a colleague offered to do filler for me, and I thought I was getting Restylane or Juvederm. What was it? It was silicone. Ooh. If you follow me, you know that the only fillers that I recommend are hyaluronic base fillers like Restylane or Juvederm. There's one exception to that, and that is Sculptra. Silicone is not FDA approved for a cosmetic injection in the face. When you inject a permanent filler like silicone, it can have late onset problems like infection, granulation tissue, inflammation, but it won't necessarily create that, I mean, absolutely horrible, disturbing problem that she had with that cheek that we saw earlier. Yeah, it was actually both cheeks I was injected, but it turns out there's no silicone in my left. Mm. But so we think it was two different injections. Yeah, or two different products. We're not really sure. So that's bizarre. It sounds like she may have had some type of filler on her left, maybe a hyaluronic acid filler, maybe silicone, and then God knows what they injected on the right side. Isn't there a notation exactly what was injected? Mine was lost. Yeah. The whole chart? Yes. Here in the state of Michigan, doctors are required <coughs> to hold on to their records for at least seven years. It is against the law to get rid of them before that. So why was her chart lost? Was it conveniently lost so that they have no records of the treatment? So when did you exhibit symptoms? Like around year four. Year four, boom. And all of a sudden it just went boom and then there's just huge granulomas. Yeah, it one of the things I tell patients when they're considering getting permanent fillers is that permanent fillers are kind of like the gift that keeps on giving. Meaning that it may look good initially, and that's what a lot of people argue of, oh, I had this permanent filler and it looks good now, but you may start developing problems months, if not years later. That is a problem. <laughs> I have seen people who have had injections of permanent filler around their eyes that initially looks fine and then three, four years later they start getting lumpy and they get granulomas and even get infections of that area. A granuloma is basically a collection of inflammatory tissue, reactive tissue. The body will react, let's say, to foreign bodies or to infection by creating this tissue. So the key to avoiding this is not to have permanent fillers injected. Yeah, the first one wasn't bad and just removed the granuloma, but then it came back. So four months later, they tried to get the silicone out and that didn't work because like, the granulomas came back. It just kept coming back and forth. So it sounds like she had product that her body was really aggressively reacting to. And no matter how much they would try to cut it out, there was probably leftover product there that they weren't able to remove. It keeps coming back. And that created yet another reaction, puffing that area up. Now, when you look at the face, there are two parts of the face that swell a ton, even with fairly minor trauma. And that's around the eyes and the lips. Now, you get punched in the face, you never hear of people saying, oh, I have a fat cheek. You hear about a fat lip, you see people whose eyes swell shut. Eyes bulging, tongue swelling. So the swelling that you're seeing with these surgeries is not super, super uncommon.
And then a month later, it just got so much worse. The granuloma actually made a hole in my cheek. Then a, a year later, it was the same procedure, a local skin flap. And then less than a month later, to clean it out again because my, the granulomas came back. It sounds like her plastic surgeon was basically doing a flap where you take skin from the cheek and you move it over to cover, let's say, a defect or a hole that is there closer to the middle of the cheek underneath the eyes. The problem with these types of operations is you always have to incise around the eyelid and you can get, as you heal, scar tissue that contracts. And what happens when that scar tissue contracts and it's around the eyelid? the eyelid pulls down, and that's part of what we're unfortunately seeing with her. We have to add some volume to that lower eyelid, okay? That area of that triangle there, you're having chronic pain there, we need to somehow free up that nerve. So it looks like Dr. Nassif is going to go ahead and elevate that area. He's going to add some volume there. Volume. Either in the form of her own fat or moving tissue, from the cheek over, and then maybe remove some scar tissue to free up a nerve, a sensory nerve that comes down in that location. The issue with operating on this part of the face when she's had five different surgeries is that every operation that you perform, scar tissue will deposit in that area. And it's the accumulation of that scar tissue that can cause cosmetic issues and even functional issues like that eyelid pulling down. So unfortunately, even though you have to operate, to try to help her and improve her condition, every time you operate, you create more scar tissue that could potentially make the condition worse. So this is a really, really difficult position to be in, and I really hand it to Dr. Nassif for taking her case on. We're making our incision now. So here's the tissue coming out. So here's bone right here. That means that this infection and granulomatous tissue eroded into the bone. Injections of filler in this location are typically made fairly deep. We don't want to put it real close to the skin because it can then look lumpy. Unfortunately, she had some silicone or God knows what injected into that area, and when that got infected, it was probably so close to the bone that the bacteria from the infection may have actually seeded the bone, creating an infection there as well. That is definitely infected. That is an absolutely horrific, horrific situation. It's like a big fungal ball. Bethy? Go ahead and pull it out. Is that fungus or what is it that? It actually looks like cotton. We're bone. gonna have to make sure we irrigate out well. Thank God I found that gauze from the previous surgery. That was gauze left over? One of the absolute worst things that you can do as a surgeon is leave behind stuff inside somebody's body. Now, you've heard, I'm sure, of stories of doctors leaving behind surgical instruments, and I mean, that is horrible, but even leaving behind a small piece of gauze like this could serve as a nidus or basically a focus of infection. Oh, smell, that's infection. She's had a ton of problems with that cheek, and it is definitely possible that retained gauze in a sinus or in that area could actually create this problem. And if she's had five operations and that gauze has been left since, let's say, the first one or the second one, then I can see why this was continuing to happen to her. Leaving gauze inside your patient is a medical nightmare and should absolutely never happen. And that's why we always count how much gauze we have at the end of every surgery to make sure that none of it is still in the patient. Remember you had an area of necrotic skin that was really bad? I found a foreign body, like a piece of gauze in what? your sinus. Oh my gosh. So gauze? we took that out. By removing that gauze, I really hope that all of these problems that she had, I mean, just over and over and over again, which was blamed on the silicone, which to me, it just doesn't make sense that silicone would create this type of a reaction, but maybe all those problems are due to the gauze and hopefully she can heal fairly normally after this. That poor, poor woman. I'm just really grateful that I have a chance now to reclaim my life because um, things were starting to look dismal. Well, she has a long road ahead of her, but I'm so glad that she was taken care of by such a great plastic surgeon. Now, her previous doctor botched her operation by leaving gauze inside her cheek. I mean, I still can't believe that this has gone on for her for so long. But what about if that plastic surgeon leaves a patch of pubic hair on your face? Seriously, pubic hair growing out of your cheek. You gotta take a peek at this video right up here where I react to a recent episode of Botched to a woman that this happened to. How do you get rid of these pubes on your face? You'll find out by watching this video. And remember, my friends, eat real food, use clean skincare, and only consider actual plastic surgery as a last resort.